Technology is a wonderful thing when you remember to bring it out. <laughs> Today we join the church throughout the world in stepping out of the cycle of ordinary time to celebrate the solemnity of all saints, the communion of saints of which we, by virtue of our baptism, are called. And so, brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sin and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Our salvation comes through the shedding of your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You call us to holiness of life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. In your loving love, you give us the witness of, your, of all the saints. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of Revelations. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels, who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our gods. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the Israelites. After this, I had a vision of great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshiped God, and exclaimed, Amen, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The Word of the Lord. to see your face. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The fullness of the Lord belongs to God, the world and all who dwell in it. 
For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that also see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? Whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Lord, this is the people that long to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward. From God his Savior, such is the race that seeks the Lord, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is the world does not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do not know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes himself pure as he is pure. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I love this feast of all the saints. It is my favorite feast because it is such an inclusive feast. It reminds me of that passage from John's Gospel that said, In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. In my Father's house there's room enough for everyone. And that means you and me. For indeed we are called to be numbered among the communion of saints. Frequently, I think, when we think in terms of the saints, we think in terms of those saints of a long time ago, who when we were growing up as kids in our parishes, and especially if you were back in the Midwest or the Mideast, or the, in, the, in, the far, in the East, you would find churches lined with stained glass windows and images of the saints there would be statuary depicting some of your favorite saints or, or icons. And those are the saints we kind of hang on to. And those are wonderful saints, but they are the saints of a long time ago. We need to be mindful of the saints among us. Even today, earlier this very day, of, of, of Father McGinley, the founder of the, uh, Mag of the Knights of Columbus, was beatified in Connecticut a reminder of how one who saw a ministry of seeking to involve laymen in the life of the church has had an impact on us, thus declared blessed, thus declared as an example or a witness for us of who we might become. What did he do? He took the ordinary gifts that God has given him and sought to use them to the best of his ability. Three weeks ago, and I wrote about this in the bulletin, in, in, um, in Assisi, Blessed Carlo Acutis was beatified. An Italian teen who died at the age of 15 at the, of leukemia, who used his God-given talents, which were really geeky talents, utilizing the internet and uh, social media to say the good things that we need to hear about the power and presence of Jesus in the Eucharist, and the, uh, the influence of Mary through apparitions in, in, our, uh, in our life of faith. He said for himself, the Eucharist was his highway to heaven. And even as a 15-year-old kid, he had a tremendous impact upon not just young people, but people of every age, calling us to fidelity, calling us to faithfulness. When we celebrate this liturgy each year, we begin with that passage from the book of Revelation. And when we hear passages from the book of Revelation, we go, ooh, that's scary. Well, it shouldn't be. It is apocalyptic literature. It is meant, intended to be symbolic. But it does depict a reality for us. For the scriptures which we listened to the, in that first reading uh, was the vision of the heavenly liturgy. And there are two visions that were there. The first vision focused on Israel, of the 144,000 that would be saved. And yet we shouldn't look at that as just being just 144,000. 
because that first vision is focused on the children of Israel who heard the word and were faithful to it. Taking the 12 tribes of Israel, squaring that, multiplying it by a thousand, you get the 144,000. It's so supposed to mean so many people that we can't count them. And yet so frequently we try to be literalist about this. But what it focuses on was the hope for the children of Israel, the chosen people, those who remain faithful, those who have yet to receive Christ as the Messiah. There are a few verses that were omitted that enumerated the 12 tribes of Israel to make sure we know of how foundational they were to God's plan. And that second vision of too many people of every race and tongue and nation that couldn't even be counted because there's room enough for everyone in my father's house. And indeed, they stand in praise around the throne of God and of the Lamb that was slain that lives forever, the presence of the risen Christ. And we are told that they were clothed in white robes and carried palm branches, robes that were washed white in the blood of the Lamb. The utter contradiction of that. You know, if you throw a piece of uh, red clothing in with your white laundry, it's all going to come out pink. And yet, these robes were washed white in the blood of the Lamb. In the earliest church, those were considered to be the martyrs. Those who literally laid down their lives for the faith. And the palm branch symbolizes that martyrdom. This feast has been observed uh, since at least as back as far as the 4th century in the East and in the West. And it was originally the Feast of All Martyrs. It wasn't until later that we recognized the virtue of men and women who did not literally uh, suffer for the faith by laying down their lives, but whose lives were exemplary witnesses and examples of faith, much as uh, those who I mentioned already. That is important for us to look to the saints as an example of who we are and how we shall live, that we are called to be the children of God. And St. John speaks to us as well in that second reading. Brothers and sisters, we are God's children now. By virtue of our baptism, we are consecrated as the sons and the daughters of the living God. What we shall become is yet to be revealed. That means this is our proving uh, ground. This is our test. This is our opportunity to strive to conform our lives to Christ Jesus. So that through encountering us, others will encounter the person and presence of Christ through our understanding and compassion, our forgiveness and our mercy. And every year on this feast, we hear the telling of the Beatitudes from Matthew's Gospel. The beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, essentially the Beatitudes are the preamble of the Sermon on the Mount that gives us all the basics and essentials of our faith. Beyond the Beatitudes, which have a beautiful sense of poetry to them, it gets nitty-gritty about loving your enemy and turning the other cheek and all of those things that are a challenge to us day in and day out. It begins on calling on the blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. The poor in spirit are those who realize that anything that I can accomplish, anything that I can do, is not based on my own ability or merit, but is the free and gracious gift of God given to each one of us. And with that sense of that poverty of spirit, we have that sense of emulating Christ in being merciful, in caring for the mourning among us, in being peacemakers, and striving to be pure at heart, to have that hunger and thirst for real justice, and be really, literally ready to lay down our lives for the faith. We live in a culture that suffers from spiritual poverty. And it's not the kind of poverty that says, I trust in God and I believe in God, but it's the kind of poverty that says, I'm going to uh, be the rugged individualist and do this on my own. Anything that I do, it's because I made it possible. 
We see a lot of that bravado, especially as we draw ever closer to a national election. A lot of back patting, uh, people patting themselves on the back for the things they felt they have accomplished. And yet there is very little recognition of the presence of God in our midst. And it is essentially the presence of God which calls us to that ultimate sense of holiness for which this feast is focused. I hope you get a chance to read my bulletin column today because as Deacon Ed said before Mass, he said, well, if you, everybody just reads your column, you don't have to give a homily. <laughs> I hope you're going to read my column and get the other homily because it really talks something about our role in the communion of saints. And then one of the images that I used is that I've had this date on my calendar uh, highlighted for more than a year because I knew that this day where November 1st fell on a Sunday and we celebrated the communion of saints was going to be the 15th annual parish picnic. Well, COVID-19 became the curveball that altered that. But that doesn't mean we can't still have that sense of coming together. And there are a lot of things that have been a curveball that have challenged us over the course of this pandemic and will continue to challenge us as we go forth. We can kind of cave in under it all, or we can take the opportunity or the attitude of saying, what is God saying to us through what we are experiencing now? So many people say, oh, I can't wait for 2020 to be over. Well, I don't want to burst your bubble, but on January 1st, 2021, we will still be dealing with the same issues. And it calls us to us for a certain resolve that focuses us to be among those who have that uh, sense of purity of heart where we can begin to see God working in our lives and in our world through every challenge that comes our way. The other thing we hear is, oh, I can't wait things to get back to normal. And many of us probably know normal as we knew it will never be normal as we have it again. And maybe that, too, is a good thing, because it shakes us out of our lethargy. It shakes us out of our rut. It calls us to rethink who we are as citizens of this global community, as well as men and women of faith, consecrated to Christ Jesus by virtue of our baptism. It calls upon us to be that new creation, to be that reflection of the risen Lord who calls us through death to life and who is always going to be the source of our hope. For wherever there is life, there is hope. Today, as we celebrate this great feast of the communion of saints, let us not only be mindful of those who have gone before us, those who have been recognized as uh, canonized saints in our church, but also be mindful of those who have influenced us in our own growth and development of the, uh, of the faith, and that have taught us how to live by good, strong values. Let us thank God for them as well. And then let us fall in line with that great assembly of the communion of saints, who strive to live each day well, who strive to each day be a reflection of Jesus for ourselves and for one another in some small way. Are we perfect? No. None of the saints were. But they got up one more time than they fell. Brothers and sisters, we are God's children now. Brothers and sisters, we are numbered among that great assembly of the communion of saints. I believe 
in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Together with the communion of saints, we intercede with God for the needs of the church, the needs of the world, and our own needs as well. That the example of holy men, women, and children of faith who've gone before us may encourage Christians throughout the world to embody the example of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In gratitude to God for those unheralded saints whose witness Help them form our own lives of faith and service, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unity of our nation as we mark a general election this week, and that those seeking public office may be committed to justice, equality, and safeguarding the dignity of all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our union with the communion of saints in heaven may motivate the unity of all Christians on earth and foster a passion for service to the church among our young. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the suffering, for victims of natural disasters, oppression, injustice, and COVID-19, and for all who ask for the support of our prayer for any need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our, our beloved dead, let us especially remember Loretta M. Madden, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for St. Raphael Parishioner Desiree Ruiz, and for Nathan Hallows, who were joined together in sacramental marriage in this church yesterday for God's blessing upon their lives together, we pray to the Lord. God, your compassion and mercy is made manifest in the lives of the saints. Hear the prayer of our heart, and by the example of our lives, help us to be numbered among the holy ones we honor this day. And we make our prayer in the name of Jesus the Lord. I need to be done.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for today by your gift we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother where the great array of our brothers and sisters already give you eternal praise. Towards her we hasten eagerly as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial gift by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Our Lady of the Valley, with your blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Raphael and with all the angels and saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by the word of God, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with each of you always. Amen.
desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you.
Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly home, through Christ our Lord. Today is your last opportunity to enroll the names of your deceased loved ones in our annual All Souls Remembrance. Parish-specific envelopes are available in the vestibule and should be completed before you leave church today. The All Souls Day Mass will be celebrated publicly at 9 a.m. this Monday here at Our Lady of the Valley Church. Everyone is welcome to join the Generations of Faith virtually for the monthly adult formation session this Tuesday at 6 p.m. via Facebook live stream. The topic, I believe, focuses on the creed. Anita Kilcran will be the presenter. The St. Vincent de Paul Society is handing out empty bags to be filled up with non-perishable food items for the fall food drive and return to Mass next weekend or dropped off at the pantry during their regular hours of operation. See today's bulletin for the pantry hour, hours and for items the pantry is especially in need of. In these rough times, the need is great. Be as generous as you can. And if you didn't know, this Tuesday is Election Day. Following the 9 a.m. Mass at St. Raphael, we invite everyone to join in nonpartisan silent prayer before the Blessed Sacrament for the unity and well-being of our nation. A sign-up list for adoration and half-hour segments is available in the vestibule right next to the All Souls Remembrance to ensure that someone is present during the whole time of exposition. Adoration will conclude with benediction at noon on Tuesday. Be sure to take a parish bulletin for more parish news and that second homily that you're going to get. And if you haven't already done so, get out and vote this Tuesday. Holy Communion for live stream viewers will be distributed after Mass until 5.30 p.m. And let me encourage you as you leave the church today and head for your homes, be especially vigilant of little ones who will be more focused on candy than on paying attention to crossing the street. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and proclaim the good news. Thanks.